Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. That was uh, I was expecting it to go a little higher. You want to see if you can do the high note? Oh, I can definitely do the high note. You can do the high note? note? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's your high note? No, we did this like a month ago. Did we? Yes, we totally did. And I had the slightly higher note. Did you have the slightly yeah, higher Yeah, barely, note? but yes. I think. We did it as a whole thing. It was commented on and everything. <laughs> I don't believe you. All right, well, we're drinking a whiskey <laughs> from Ryan Butler, the patron saint. <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> Ryan Butler, you, you patron, patron saint, saint of whiskey. whiskey. Yeah! This is very nerve wracking. Okay. Uh, I had not assessed the situation. I didn't know how. Oh, I know. When you grab like this and, right. and the box slides, right, that's right. not cool. Okay. This is 18 year old Jameson. Oh, right on. Right? Yeah. So. We lay. It's a regular proof, or did they bump it up? What are we doing? We're about to find out. Oops. 40. <laughs> oh. hey. hey, but the bottle's a little different. You're about to find out it's 40. Instead of a perfectly round bottle, it's the same basic shape, I believe. But yeah, you have, like, this looks ridges. like. What is the bourbon that has these? A Sazerac rye. It's got the ridges around the edges. Where's the Sazerac rye bottle? Makes it feel a little special. Do you? A Sazer what are you looking at, Sazerac? Well, because it's the same, look, <laughs> that's what it reminds me of. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, so, and you said it was just regular 40%, 40%, 18 years old, fair enough. Okay, so this, according to them, is it's 18 years old. It started, like all Jameson, in sherry and X bourbon casks. So just regular Jameson. Yeah, and then they took those and put them into first fill bourbon casks again, right? Okay, so they moved them ad again. Okay. After it all. And just a reminder: first fill, when it comes to other countries. When it comes to Ireland and Scotland, right. first fill means the first time they filled it. Yeah. After receiving it. So it's not first first. That's usually what they refer to as virgin. Virgin. Yeah. So uh, it says. Three signature distillates. Now, there are only three base styles of Irish whiskey. Mm -hmm. Single malt, pot still, and grain. Yeah. So it's possible, just like the normal Jameson, this includes all three. Do we have any kind of idea of what the you know average age is in just a regular bottle of Jameson there? No, but the rumor is it's somewhere between like six, eight on average. Okay, so this should be a meaningful difference in the aging. Yeah, but again, I don't know that that number is accurate. Right. I've heard that number said. Right. We didn't ask that question when we were at Middleton, so right. I don't know what the number is. Okay. Huh. This does not smell as instantly typical Irish as I would no, think. No, what's missing is, because Jameson is, um, it's it's so common. Right. It's fairly synonymous with Irish whiskey at this point. Oh yeah. And there is like well, this vanilla th cream, on purpose. this vanilla cream shortbread note that shows up in a lot of Irish whiskeys, this one included, and on the nose, a note that I'm not finding Son of a bitch. is the vanilla cream shortbread cookie note. It's much more of a, of a fruity, of a fruit cream. Less of a vanilla, more of a fruit cream. Cream and like, uh, you know, you ever had fr fresh sliced berries uh, with cream? But not the shortbread cookie like you were saying. Yeah. There's a, it's more witty, too. Yeah, the, the, the Okinawa dish. Yeah. Well, I like that. Yeah, there's like uh, almost, um, almost turns into like a preserve. Oh my with God. sweetness. Look. This, as a bar, if I owned a bar, and uh, I wanted to make people feel it good. It did it. It made me step away. Yeah. If I wanted to make people feel good about spending extra money on an 18-year-old, like this would hit the spot for non-whiskey drinkers wow. who are like, it's so smooth. It's so beautiful. It's 18-year-old yeah. Jameson. And it's like, yeah, absolutely. Compared to this, which I'm about to pour you, okay. the classic Jameson. And the, the flavors... They're so soft, they just unfold. Yeah. They just roll from one into another. So the typical Jameson. And it's really nice to have that obviousness of taste with that low of a proof. Oh, this is so weird. Uh, pick up the original Jameson, go this, and then instantly this, honeydew melon. All right. And lemon, lemon. 
Oh, yeah, there's the lemon for sure. See what I mean? Yep, yep, yep. Interesting. Yeah, as much I have like... never picked up lemon, yeah. citrus, and, and Jameson before. And usually you unlock flavors and notes by doing AB. This is an AB of the same whiskey. Roughly ish, speaking, yeah. Just with different uh, aging. Yeah. That lemon is strong. Yeah. I can't unsee it now. Although, between the two, I'm going with the, the 18. The 18 is. Yeah, the extra nice. time. The extra time. Absolutely added some niceness to the oh, whiskey. There's a it's richness to it. Rich and velvety and smooth. And on the taste. And the fun thing is they're both 40, so we're getting an A B comparison on proof. Mm -hmm. The this one is way more brittle and like shiny sugar. Oh, actually, which leads to a, a question I think I included. I find more of the vanilla cream on the taste. Um, it was just a berries and cream on, mm. the, on the nose. There's the vanilla starting to show up on the taste, and then like this beautiful matured um, wood character starts to lift up all of these really soft, sweet, desserty flavors. I like the hell out of that. That one. is be uh, like very pretty, very pretty, br very friendly. This is mm -hmm. effortless, but at the same time, the age has added some nice depth to it. Now, 150, which bucks. is weird to say with the 40 percent whiskey. 150 bucks. We just spent 150 on that. I day. would spend so much of your money. Yeah, on, my money on so many of these whiskeys. I don't know that I'd spend 150 on it. Uh, 150. I would spend. You know what? I, you know what I do? 80 bucks. I'll tell you what I'd do. If there was a hardcore Jameson fanatic. Oh yeah. In my life. Yes. That I cared enough. Like I want to get him something nice. This absolutely. Then, yeah, they would really appreciate that because it's not so so far removed from Jameson that it's right. You know, you know, it's gonna uh, be pleasing to a Jameson fan. Yeah, and I think I mean it's kind of an expensive experiment, but if you wanted to have a Jameson uh, a devotee, right? Um, it's see what does age do to a spirit that they're very familiar with. And granted, there may be some like little differences in, in you know what the actual spirit is in here compared to this. Fine, but. There's enough similarity, enough commonality that we go, oh, this is what I know and love, but oh my gosh, look at what the age did. Right. And you're not having to raise the proof to find those notes. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. I like that. I like it. Your $150 worth. Paul Meyer. Daniel, can you explain the meaning of some of the descriptors you use in respect yes. to whiskey? For example, I've seen you and Rex describing whiskeys as shiny mm -hmm. or brittle. The same goes when you describe something as oaky or iodine. So I think shiny and brittle are very close. Yeah. Oaky and iodine are very different. Oh, yeah. I don't have a reference point for iodine, so is there a whiskey that re it's really heavy on that note that I should try so I can gain that reference point? Yes. Same same thing with oaky. Springbank 10. For the iodine? Has really dramatic iodine note for me. Okay. Um, For the oaky, ah, it's more bourbon territory, but the thing is it that is more bourbon. oaky but presents totally differently in a scotch than it does in a bourbon. It does, and I think um, oakiness, even though it's more prominent in bourbon, mm -hmm. it is a note that can get out of control very quickly and turn into a bitter. Yeah, so I think there's a, hot climates. I think there's a lot of bourbon makers to where they're trying to keep that oak from just taking over. Yeah, the tannins to dominate. So, uh, what's something that's going to have an obvious... You know what's a good question for the comments? What's the oakiest bourbon you can think of? Yeah, that's reasonably accessible. Yeah, not craft. Well, in craft, though, I mean, there's some. In craft, is so much easier. Yeah. I mean, Garrison, some of the Balconas, right. some of the Iron Root, right. right, on and on and, and on. And then there's some where there's it's craft and they're trying to find their footing. Yeah. And you know, like, and you can tell. That's you, Woody. You can tell. Uh, they made something. They had a lot of money and time invested in it. They had to release it. Yeah. But eh, we all got it. I was like, wow, that's getting a little heavy handed with the oak. I don't think anybody's looking for that much wood impact on the mouth except Shiny. for Daniel. Yeah. Of course, but only with the, a dusting of powdered sugar. So, uh, <laughs> shiny and brittle. I want to answer this question the way I answer it in class. Yeah. So I'm going to answer it as asked first, which sure. is, in my estimation, shiny and brittle falls into metallic or frosting direction. I think so. I so was... if you've had vanilla frosting, okay. cake frosting, mm -hmm. that is a shiny or a brittle sugar that, taste. And also, here's the thing, the same way that we did in a recent video on the Whiskey Tribe channel, uh, coming to a conclusion that the word smooth, perfectly acceptable to mm -hmm. use, smooth uh, is not flavor, smooth is texture. Yeah. And for me, shiny and brittle is kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum of 
smooth. It's a textural note. It's sharp. There are flavors that are very, very often associated yeah. with that texture of shiny and brittle and bright. So let me get the to the second half. The smooth is rounded and voluptuous and just unfold. Yeah. The first half is I typically, personally, I'm trying to answer as asked, like yeah. Dr. Grant says, I, I typically associate That's that with- That's our marriage counselor. Yeah, metal, metallic sugar notes. Yeah. It worked real well. <laughs> metallic sugar notes. <laughs> And, uh, you know, also aspartame, oh, like yeah. a diet soda. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That falls into the category of that metallic sharp sugar note for me, right? Yeah. Now, we teach this Roy, the founder and, of Wizard Academy yeah. and uh, of Magic Worlds, uh, does this in class and I use it in whiskey school. Yes. Which is there are ways that humans interpret ideas and shapes and phonetics um, that don't make any logical sense, but are absolutely accurate. Yeah. Which means like, for example, he always does this. There are two shapes I'm drawing, right? Mm -hmm. One of these is, here's one shape. Here's the other shape. Now, one of these is right. called La Luna, right. and one of them is called Tatakata. Which right. one's called La Luna? The yeah. wavy one, right? The smooth curve, yeah. yeah. One of these tastes smooth. One of these tastes sharp and brittle. Right. Right? One of these is male. One of these is female. Mm -hmm. Right? Th these are all questions that you answer just by looking at that shape. Right. That make absolutely no sense. Right. But except in your right brain where pattern recognition happens. Mm -hmm. And then your right brain goes like, well, yeah, of course. The, you, you of course, the curvy one's female. A lifetime of experiences and associations, understanding that the softer, curvier things typically are called, you know, the things with female the sounds and softer, soft phonetics curvier and, sounds. Yeah. Right. So when we, I use terms like sharp, brittle sugar, shiny. Yeah. I'm going off of the right brain's interpretation of what a taste that was shiny right. versus a taste that was dull, mm -hmm. which is not an actual tasting note. Yeah. Dull and shiny don't have actual like lemon or vanilla right. or caramel type tasting notes, but I think they are absolutely accurate tasting notes. Yeah, fair enough. The Wabbit 10882. The Indian fennel, fennel thing you were talking about mm. is called mukwas. Mukwas in Hindi, pronounced, oh, it's <laughs> pronounced tukmas. Then why is there an M? <laughs> Pronounced like tukmas, as is as in Spanish for more. It's a breath freshener after eating an Indian meal. You're welcome. Yeah, we tried to reference that at one yeah. point, but we couldn't remember what it was called. I still look. I'm gonna five minutes from now. I'm not gonna remember. Tukwas? No, it's it's it looks like mukwas, but pronounced tukmas. 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 Okay. Tukmas. There will just take the M out. You can't go from to your point exactly. You can't go from an mmm sound to a t sound. Sure you can. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, so I am this. You know what? This was everything that I hoped Jameson would turn into with added Over time. years. I yeah. agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now we just need to convince the good people at Jameson to stop selling their whiskey, full stop, and put a lot more years into it, and then just start selling this at the Budget as, as this at the budget whiskey price. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I believe we can do it. Here's defining ceiling and pain. <laughs> it's 2021, anything's possible. <laughs> if you fight me, a fight for friends. You steal, may you steal your livers. And if you drink, may, may you drink with us. But these are not really bottle lords, these are like major donor levels. So, what do we want to call them? Just bottle lords still? Bottle lords. Hey, so this episode brought to you. By Michael R. Effing Drew. <laughs> <laughs> He's the, the, the Lord among lords. Yes. Some should, yes, thank yes. you. You know. Bye. Wistful. Try it. Bye. No, that was wistful. <laughs> <laughs>